Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, come the I am honored and privileged today to share with you the history of KWCSC. The story and journey of KWCSC is like a love story where most people involved would like to jump and see the ending. The journey of KWCSC is a successful story because it was planned well from the very beginning to today. Let's begin the story from the year 2008, when the survey on violence against women was conducted for the first time in Kiribati. The survey was known as the Kiribati Family Health and Support Study, and it was the biggest study in the history of Kiribati. In 2010, the findings came out and made everybody speechless. The findings showed that Kiribati has the highest prevalence of violence against women in the Pacific region. 68% of women and, women and girls between the ages of 15 to 49 years have experienced physical and or sexual abuse by their intimate partners. The government of that day endorsed the findings and quickly prioritized programs to eliminate sexual and gender-based violence in the entire country. In March 2011, during the International Women's Day, the government approved and endorsed the first policy called the National Approach to Eliminating Sexual and Gender-Based Violence and a 10-year National Action Plan for the years 2011 to 2021. Starting from March that year, campaigns and lobbying were organized by a small team from the Women's Development Division. In 2012, a campaign for the new ministry dedicated for women and the lobby for the new law on family peace began. I was privileged to be among those in the front line of the campaign. Our team at the Women's Development Division, under the leadership of Anne Kausu at that time, was the strongest and most committed and dedicated team. But in the new policy and the National Action Plan, it does not specifically state the need for a new center, but only recommended the support to bodies that are providing services to victims of violence. But in 2013, another plan was developed to support further the implementation of the NAP. And this plan was called the SHIP, or the Shared Implementation Plan. This is a homegrown initiative. One of the priorities of the SHIP was the establishment of the KWCSC. The name of the center was decided and finalized straight away. In the same year, a study tour was conducted to Auckland, New Zealand and to Melbourne, Australia. Two teams went, one to New Zealand and the other team went to Australia. But during that study tour, both teams visited a number of centres, shelters and organisations that are focusing and providing frontline services to survivors of violence. The dream after that study tour that Kiribati needs a centre. But the concerns remained. Who will support it and how it to make it happen? So the team from the Women's Development Division, together with the key stakeholders, recommended that the centre should be an independent centre. So between 2014 to 2015, a survey was conducted to test the capacity of NGOs in Kiribati. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the Kiribati Family Health Association of Kiva was named in the survey to be the right NGO to our space center. So between 2015 to 17, 
if I accepted the responsibility. <laughs> and started a new journey to establish KWCSC. And apologies. The center was initially planned to be a one-stop shop, meaning a center will in-house all services required for a survivor of violence. Say, for example, under one roof, a police officer, a counselor, a nurse, and many more will be in one office. Kifa strongly recommended that this was not a realistic approach. And the center should begin with counselling service first and will begin small. So around this time, there were concerns on how the center will operate. Will the woman come to the center when it's established? Defend another external partners at that time were not sure to, and there were times that the planning for the center was dropped. <coughs> However, Kiva tried to fulfill their obligation, and with funding support from the Australian government, it enabled Kiva to make the dream a reality. The bottom line and aim that Kiva will auspice KWCSC and will support it until it becomes an independent center. In 2017, Kifa started to recruit staff of the center. They first recruited a receptionist, and the coordinator myself was recruited in July 2017. When I was informed that I got a job at KWCSC, I was in Canberra that time, awaiting for my graduation. The two counsellors were recruited later in 2017. At the end of 2017, the centre was started with four staff and we, we were started at Kipa's office in Diaretic. So in January 2018, we moved to our new office in Bailey, this place. And on the 31st of January, the same year, the centre was officially opened by the Australian High Commission. But the day after the opening ceremony, new clients started to visit the center. But later in the year, KWCSE conducted its first and more general meeting and have selected the members of the council for board. Since the first time this center opened until mid-June this year, in total there are 119 women who have visited KWCSE for support, protection, and assistance. Even last week, more women are coming to this center. I am grateful that there are, we are all fulfilling what has been planned since 2013. And I cannot stop think, thanking the team who sit, discussed, argued, and agreed together for making the dream a reality. My special and big thank you to Kifa the executive director, staff, board members, and volunteers for the great support, leadership, and guidance. Without your support gift, I knew this center will never come this far. I also would like to thank the Australian government for their continuous funding support to this center. You and, you and women, and the Fiji Women's Crisis Center for technical support in particular, the ongoing support training and mentoring of our counsellors. Now I'm looking forward to working further with the Fiji Women's Crisis Center together with other centers in the region, in particular, the Tongan Women and Children's Crisis Center and the Vanuatu Women's Center. I am privileged to join this regional network of feminists who are standing in the forefront to support women and girls. KWCSC is an organization that promoting gender equality and enhancing women's human rights. This is the journey of KWCSC and I know that as we are becoming a new and independent center, we will remain working together, hand in hand, 
with our key partners from SafeNet and Kifa and everybody. Without further ado, I thank you all and I hope today will bring you the Maori that I or the Tamil Ambassador.